Good evening, everyone. Welcome to America's Third Party's Conspiracy Monday. I'm David John Sponheim, and I'm running for president in 2016, taking on some of the most difficult subjects on Earth. Unlike the mainstream media, we go out of our way to reach into the dark circles of secrecy that are under the belly of American corruption. We're going to be looking contributing to a major circulation American journal. We do have people who submit pieces to other to American journals. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in an executive session. Executive session, all right. Keeping it hidden from the American people. Well, clearly, that's been at the backbone of this corruption for some time. We cannot keep this hidden. Our free press needs more disclosure. You know, the work that Edward Snowden did is actually a good thing, but it is espionage. This man was uh, completely untrained, unable to handle the, the secrets that he handled, but clearly he got away with it. And clearly this is a problem. We have uh, a, a loose knit network of security that seems to be uh, one cover up after another. Uh, this Edward Snowden case is exemplary of how a guy who's not even a, a high school graduate could uh, become a major, major spy sitting right next to the uh, the secret top secret information that we hold dear to our nation's defense I had a family a home in paradise and I lived in great comfort yeah he did have a home in paradise and he had a great thing he he gave up and I must say he did expose the fact that the NSA is watching us and I really do appreciate that but uh, we've had a lot of uh, hints along the way about how the elitists have been controlling our world and how they're, they want to ultimately, uh, they, they want to literally control everything about us. There are people in our history, even George W. Bush recently had a slip of tongue in reference to the Boston Marathon attack uh, that have alluded to the possibility of a conspiracy. Listen to this little slip of the tongue. Uh, you know another cons uh, uh, you know another cons uh, uh, you know another cons uh, organized highly organized attack on the country the former yeah so clearly he was going to say conspiracy when he referred to the Boston Marathon attack he, he then called it a highly organized attack uh, I don't know Sarnef Jokar is being tried he claims he's not guilty uh, that whole event has a lot of questions about it. The civilian support team that was there in a paramilitary gear with their cell phones during the attack, the Boston Marathon attack, uh, really belies a, a deeper question. Why weren't they out there as first responders helping the people that have had amputations, etc.? Uh, why were they even there? No one's ever answered that in the government. And uh, Sarnaf Jokar uh, is claiming he's not guilty. Uh, he was uh, not Mirandized for 18 hours. And uh, I imagine he might even get off because of the way they handled the case. It's, it's almost like uh, they want to target somebody. So they found these Chechen rebel family members who uh, are connected. And it's all deeply connected. In fact, uh, one of their relatives works for Halliburton. Very strange. So you wonder, are these events false flag operations? One really has to question uh, the possibility that any number of things are being uh, hashed out there. You know, John F. Kennedy warned us about the secret societies many years ago. Uh, here's a speech for, from John F. Kennedy's secret society speech. And from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I'm not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence in the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors 
For as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when, when we miss them. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to abuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. Right. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Okay, there you have it. And he was warning us about controlling the press and how it's affecting uh, how our government works. Politics works well when the free press works. Right now, we don't have a free press. I understand uh, that uh, CNN and Fox have fired most of their most of their top investigative journalists. That's my understanding. Uh, the stories that are developing around the country are pretty severe. Uh, they've got uh, very very strange earmarks. For instance, this story right here suggests that multiple shooters at the U.S. Navy facility in D.C. were, were called initially because uh, there were witnesses claiming that there was shooting going on in di different parts of the shipyard. And they said right here, authorities are searching for a handgun, handgun wielding white male in a tan military st style uniform along with a black male. So that's uh, very suspicious you got to wonder what's going on with that when we see that they're morphing the story into other things too that the uh, Navy Yard shooter acted alone so suddenly there's no, no longer two people shooting it's one person and then he purchased a shotgun lawfully which of course means that this is going to reignite the debate about assault weapons bans and of course this is something that very much sounds like a false flag operation I'm not saying it was but it very well could have been and of course the old standby, an Al-Qaeda leader, is called for the lone wolf attack. This threat came two days before the shooting yesterday that killed 13 in Navy Yard violence, or this morning. So that is a very strange coincidence, too. The government's been using this Al-Qaeda leader story numerous times throughout our history, uh, almost foreshadowing what could be coming in the future. Uh, let's not forget too what Eisenhower said in his famous speech to uh, warn us of the military industrial complex. Let's play that for you. That's worth listening to just a bit of. Comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources, and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. Okay, there you have it. And uh, we've got other things going on that are very relevant. Uh, John Kerry the bumbling the other day about the war that he wants to start in Syria, whether boots would be on the ground. Let's play a little bit of that. It's almost laughable. 
Is that something that the administration would accept as part of a resolution? Uh, Mr. Chairman, it would be preferable not to, not because the, 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 there's any intention or any plan or any desire whatsoever to have boots on the ground. Now, I think the President will give you every assurance in the world, as am I, as, as the Secretary of Defense and, and the Chairman. But in the event Syria imploded, for instance, or in the event there was a uh, 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 threat of a chemical weapons cache falling into the hands of uh, al Nusra or someone else, and it was clearly in the interest of our allies and, and all of us, the, the British, the French, and others, to prevent those weapons of mass destruction falling into the hands of the worst elements, I don't want to take off the table an option that might or might not be available to the President of the United States to secure our country. If we so obviously he's talking in circles. He's going to put boots on the ground uh, in the event of some major outbreak of violence in the area. Now, the UN handling the gases is like uh, putting a, a complete imbecile in charge of highly complex uh, technical data. I mean, let's face it. What has the UN done, accomplished in all of their existence? I know of no wars that have been uh, averted because of the UN actions. Our actions have always been to use force, like when Bill Clinton uh, landed bombs on uh, Serbia. Uh, we know that, that these types of things uh, occurred back then that prevented any further war. But we don't want to go there. We don't want to go to that point with Syria. America's third party is against war. We're non-interventionists. We would rather provide humanitarian assistance and let them sort it out because this problem is not going to get any simpler with the UN involvement, I, I assure you. Now, our concern right now is that we don't get any more lies from Barack Obama. We've got uh, lies like this lie right here. Coming up. and law enforcement agencies with the tools they need to track and take out the terrorists without undermining our Constitution and our freedom. That means no more illegal wiretapping of American citizens. Okay, well that's obviously not the case. Uh, he's lying about it on Jay Leno. He's telling people that uh, we're not uh, listening in on your conversations. Well, clearly they are. Independent studies have shown that over 2,717 phone calls have been tapped over the past four years, along with 50,000 emails. Uh, so let's face it, they aren't doing anything that would be considered transparent. So stay with us. Uh, watch our show Mondays. We do Conspiracy Mondays 6 to 9, and we talk about all of these issues in depth and how a third party would kind of change all of that would change the way our country handles its security as well as maintaining much more transparency with the American people so that we can get accountability from our government officials.